Good morning. Welcome to virtual worship hosted by Communitarian Unitarian Universalist Congregation at White Plains. I'm Tracy Brenneman, the Director of Lifespan Religious Education and Faith Development. Our service today will be a little different because we are on a different platform. You can't, we can't see or hear you, but hopefully you can see and hear us. We do ask for your patience as we learn what it means to worship together in a different way. If you have any technical issues, please type in the chat. We have people watching the chat. And I'll give you a phone number. Laura Kim Joyner is at 914-948-1696. We had to make a few last minute changes. So you won't be able to see each other, but you can write to each other in the chat. And we encourage you to do that now. If you're on your tablet, go ahead and write in the chat and say hello and good morning to everyone else who's in there with you. In March, CUUC is sharing the plate with Murray Grove Retreat and Renewal Center, the only UU conference center in metro, Amer in metro area, and the site traditionally considered to be where universalism in America began. If you would like to make a donation, please send a check to CUUC with Murray Grove in the subject line. You'll find our mailing address on our website. We have just two weeks left before Reverend Meredith Garman returns from sabbatical. Meanwhile, Reverend Kimberly Debus continues to serve us in this suddenly very different time. Reverend Meredith and Reverend Kimberly are already in communication about current circumstances and the measures we are taking to adapt. We are so glad to welcome so many of you today members of CUUC, as well as members from other congregations here in the Hudson Valley and beyond, and our Westchester community members. It's an honor to make space for us to be together in this way. As Reverend Peggy Clark writes, closing public spaces forces people to spend more time at home, staying still is an act of kindness. This is how we take care of each other. Certainly, many of us don't have the option to stay home, but for anyone who does, this is what we are called to do. This is not hysteria. This is reasonable community living. Today, closing schools, shutting down Broadway, suspending in-person in gatherings is what love looks like. I'm the Reverend Kimberly Bebus, and I invite you to breathe deeply as we come together in worship with these words from Jennifer Kitchen. Come, sit by our fire and let us tell stories. Let me, tell, let me hear your tales of far off lands, wanderer, and I will tell you of my travels. Share your experience of the holy with me, worshiper and I will tell you of that which I find divine. Come and stay, lover of leaping, for ours is no caravan of despair, but of hope. We would hear your stories of grief and sorrow as readily as those of joy and laughter, for there is a time and a place and a hearing for all of the stories of this world. Stories are the breath and word of the spirit of life, that power that we name love. Come, for our fire is warm and we have seats for all. Come again and yet again, come speak to me of what fills your heart, what engages your mind, 
what resides in your soul. As we light the chalice in this space, I invite you to light a chalice or a candle in your own home. Come, let us worship together. We invite you now to sing, and yes, it may seem a little strange to sing in your home by yourself or just with your family, but I promise you that we will do our very best. Our hymn is set to a familiar Welsh tune, Heifredal, and UU composer Tommy Snell offers these brand new lyrics to hold us in this time of uncertainty. We invite you to sing along with us. that which binds us in community through spoken and sung words that connect us to who we are. The mission of CUUC is one that many Unitarian Universalists share. I invite all who are with us this morning to please affirm it with me. We covenant to nurture each other in our spiritual journeys foster compassion and understanding within and beyond our community, and engage in service and the world. Now let us sing together in affirmation the first verse of We Would Be One. We would be one, let us now be joined in singing.
I invite you now into a time of prayer and meditation. Spirit of life, mystery, healer, God, we come together before that which is greater than us, knowing our hearts and minds are full of questions, worry, frustration, and also with love and sympathy and connection. And so on this day, we pray for those many things we are holding. We pray for those things that give us joy and hope. Let us call to mind those things that we trust in, believe in, will sacrifice for. These are the gifts of grace, and perhaps we need not define them in order to savor them, rejoice in them, be thankful for them. As you think those things or say them aloud in your own spaces, Tracy, will light candles for your gratitude. We pray for those facing serious physical problems and are in need of healing. Some of you may be self-quarantining or are otherwise concerned for your health and avoiding the virus. Others are already carrying health concerns for yourself and for others. As you think of these people and think of these concerns, think their names or say them into your own spaces and Tracy will light candles for healing. And we pray for those seeking healing of a different kind, emotional and spiritual, financial. Some are facing family problems. Some are weary with the struggles of life and seek assurance that this will someday pass. As you lay down those burdens or speak them aloud, aloud in your own spaces, Tracy will light candles for comfort. We pray for those for whom life is often hard because of finances or legal, is legal issues and for whom this need to reduce physical space in order to flatten the curve means additional struggles for work, transportation, childcare, food. As you remember those who may be struggling or if you struggle yourself, speak those struggles aloud in your own space. Tracy will light candles for relief. For each of us, we speak the deepest prayers of our hearts in different ways, knowing that what it means for them to be answered will look different and feel different somehow for each of us. May we somehow this morning be met at the point of our differences and also in the places that we are one, with the same breath of life that courses through all things. And let us remember those prayers that go unspoken for many reasons, knowing that we are not alone as we hold one another in our hearts. Amen and blessed be. Our reading this morning is titled Pandemic, written by Lynn Unger just this past week. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider Sabbath the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life, center down, and when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. 
know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we shall live. There is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding on. We rest in this love. What does it mean to rest in love? Lynn Unger's poem and the words I just sang from Unitarian Universalist theologian Rebecca Parker invite us to understand ourselves in a different way and understand this time in a different way. And it sure is different, isn't it? As a Reverend Christian Schmidt writes, here's what I find anxiety provoking about the COVID-19 gatherings and life in general these days. I have no idea if I'm overreacting, underreacting, or just right reacting. It's impossible to know what's being alarmist versus what's just being prudent. And we almost certainly have to act before we have a full picture of the issue. He's right, it feels weird to make these big decisions about how we interact and how we live when so much is unknown. I can tell you my mind is constantly second guessing the decisions we've made so far, the preparations I've made. Did I buy enough food? Did I buy enough toilet paper? Did I, should I fill up the gas tank? How do I tell beloved friends and family I just don't want to see them right now as much as I want to see them right now? How do I protect my 70-year-old sister in Saratoga? Is she okay? And then when I think I'm okay with what's next, I remember something I hadn't thought of yet. I planned for dinners, but I didn't buy lunch food. Uh, we have weekly meetings and how's that gonna go? What about all the programs that run like clockwork that suddenly won't? And how do we sufficiently prepare the staff and leadership here in White Plains so that when Reverend Meredith returns in April, we hand him a well-oiled and safe congregation? I know you have your own thoughts. Is this too much or not enough? How am I going to get everything I need? How will I handle being alone for so long? Can I work from home? How will that go? And after a couple of weeks, are the members of our families going to be speaking to one another? And more. Will there be more cases? What will the spread look like? Will we have enough medical care? What does it look like to know when we can safely go back to work and school and church? The unknowing can be our undoing. And the more we don't know, the longer we exist in this thin liminal space of uncertainty and in between, the more it weighs on our hearts. We miss our friends and family already. We worry about them. We feel anxious about our own health and our connections to one another. Will this be the end of our friendships? Will this be the end of our life-giving programs? Will this be the end of us? How safe do we feel? Are we protected or have we been exposed? Some of us worry that we've been carrying the virus for weeks and are already spreading it. Some of us are bearing a great deal of anxiety and even anger at the process. Let's breathe. And the truth is some of us might be feeling some pockets of relief. 
Phew, we don't have to come up with an excuse not to attend an event because it's already canceled. Or, wow, my social anxiety is lessened because I can stay isolated the way I love to. I want to remind you that all of these feelings are real and valid and honored in this space. I'm not ever here to tell you not to be angry or anxious or relieved or unmotivated or resigned. I am here to offer some thoughts about how we get through this. How do we get through this when our hearts and minds are reeling? We're feeling and thinking so many different things, sometimes all at the same time. So first, and this is helpful for all of us who are trying to keep our congregations going when we can't physically be together. Remember that there is a lot that is out of our control. So we can only control the things that we can. All those preventative health measures, like washing our hands, maintaining physical distance, wiping down surfaces, stocking up on food and medications, moderating our consumption of news, getting some rest. Those things we can control. Second, do what helps you feel a sense of safety. For some, it's a daily check-in with someone. For others, it's stocking up on the items that make you feel safe. And it's important to know when you're isolating based on potential for sickness versus isolating because of anxiety or depression. Be safe and be aware of your mental needs as much as your physical needs. And as you do feel safe, reach out to others and help them feel a little safer. Physical distancing, distancing does not mean utter isolation. And there are many among us in the community who need our help, whom we can help. Making grocery and medication deliveries, making donations to the food bank and other organizations that are offering aid, making phone calls, sending cards, writing long, lovely, thoughtful emails. Third, lean into spiritual practices. Getting out in nature, and thank God it's spring in a few days. Create art, read. I don't know about you, but I've got a stack of books this high. I might have a chance. Meditate, exercise. Keep up with your discussion groups and book groups and journey groups via phone and Zoom and email. Do those things that help you sustain your spiritual health. For many of us, crises like this either affirm our personal or throw us into spiritual turmoil. Some of you may be thinking, see, I knew there wasn't a God because God wouldn't let this happen. Others of you may be thinking, I need to rely on something larger than me because I can't do this alone. Others still may be thinking, I thought I knew what I thought about the great mystery, and now I'm not so sure. And some of you may be having all of those thoughts all at once. One of the hallmarks of our Unitarian Universalist faith is that all of those thoughts are valid and real and welcomed here as we encourage each other in our spirit to honor your free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Times of crisis, especially a time like this when we are asked to slow down and do life a little differently, these are the perfect times to wrestle with these questions. And it's important to do individual reflective work like journaling, reading, praying, meditating, and connecting with others so we can wrestle together. We are all wrestling with this together. Remember that while we are physically apart, we are not alone. We are connected via what seems like the future on this live stream. We're connected by phone and email and Zoom, and we do have opportunities to see one another, maybe by taking a walk with our friends four or five feet away from us. We can deliver groceries and medications, call a friend to sit with us, 
a few feet away, but emotionally close. We can find ways to play games online or arrange a Netflix watch party or listen to bedtime stories together or find company in virtual workspaces or attend an online holy day celebration or meet with our committees and our book groups and our journey group. We may be physically apart, but we are connected, resting in love. Unitarian Universalist musician Connie Campbell Hart invites us to remember how love holds us in the lyrics we sing in hymn number 18, What Wondrous Love. Let's sing it together. story time and this morning we are reading Frederick by Leo Leone. All along the meadow where the cows grazed and the horses ran there was an old stone wall. In that wall not far from the barn and the granary a chatty family of field mice had their home. But the farmers had moved away, the barn was abandoned, and the granary stood empty. And since winter was not far off, the little mice began to gather corn and nuts and wheat and straw. They worked all day and all night, all except Frederick. Frederick, why don't you work, they asked. I do work, said Frederick. I gather sun rays for the cold, dark winter days. And when they saw Frederick sitting there staring at the meadow, they said, and now Frederick? I gather colors, answered Frederick simply, for winter is gray. And once Frederick seemed half asleep. Are you dreaming, Frederick? They asked reproachfully. But Frederick said, oh no, I'm gathering words. For the winter days are long and many and we will run out of things to say. The winter days came and when the first snow fell, the five little mice took to their hideout in the stones. In the beginning, there was lots to eat and the mice told stories of foolish foxes and silly cats. They were a happy family. But little by little, they had nibbled up most of the nuts and berries. The straw was gone and the corn was only a memory. It was cold in the wall and no one felt like chatting. Then they remembered what Frederick had said about the sun rays, the colors, and the words. What about your supplies, Frederick? They asked. Close your eyes, 
said Frederick, as he climbed on a big stone. Now I send you the rays of the sun. Do you feel how they're golden glow? And as Frederick spoke of the sun, the four little mice began feeling warmer. Was it Frederick's voice? Was it magic? And how about the colors, Frederick, they asked anxiously. Close your eyes again, Frederick said. And when he told them of the blue periwinkles, the red poppies and the yellow wheat, and the green leaves on the berry bush, they saw the colors as clearly as if they had been painted in their minds. Frederick? Frederick cleared his throat, waited for a moment, and then, as if from a stage, he said, who scatters snowflakes? Who melts the ice? Who spoils the weather? Who makes it nice? Who grows the, who grows the four leaf clovers in June? Who dims the daylight? Who lights the moon? Four little field mice who live in the sky. Four little field mice like you and I. One is the spring mouse who turns on the showers. Then comes the summer who paints in the flowers. The fall mouse is next with walnuts and wheat, and winter is last with cold little feet. Aren't we lucky the seasons are four? Think of a year with one less or one more. When Frederick had finished, they all applauded. But Frederick, they said, you're a poet. Frederick blushed and took a bow and shyly said, I know it. Now is the time. Now is the time we call on all the beautiful bits we've been gathering and storing. As we've connected during countless coffee hours, journey groups, classes, visits with Reverend Kimberly, with Reverend Meredith and each other, music, stories, meals and meetings, we have been storing up community. We have inside us the warm rays, the bright colors, and the dear words that remind us we are connected. These are the stories we will call, that we will call on as we find new and probably unexpected ways to be in community together. The gifts we will share with each other in the coming weeks are the gifts of presence, grace, patience, listening, and caring. We won't simply encounter each other's in the hallway or coffee hour. It will be up to each of us to join check-ins, online bedtime stories and groups. We will call each other, and as it feels safe to do so, we may go for walks outside together. Now is the time. We call on all the beautiful bits we've been storing up as we re-envision community. We are not closed. We are together in new ways. Our lives look a little different now, but we want you to remember, conversations will not be canceled. Relationships will not be canceled. Learning will not be canceled. Self-care will not be canceled. Hope will not be canceled. Love will not be canceled. Songs will not be canceled. And there are many songs that hold us in these uncertain times, like Comfort Me from UU musician Mimi Borstein. Let us sing it together now. <laughs> Oh, my soul. 
close with these words from Thich Nhat Hanh. It is possible that the next Buddha will not take the form of an individual. The next Buddha may take the form of a community, a community practicing understanding and loving kindness, a community practicing mindful living. This may be the most important thing we can do for the survival of the earth. Amen and blessed be. And now I invite you to join us in singing our benediction, Spirit of Life. Please join me in speaking these words as we extinguish our chalice. We extinguish the flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet together. Thank you so much for being with us. We also want to thank the people behind the scenes, Kim and Christian Force, Laura Hi. Kim Joyner, Christine Haran and Pam Parker. If you'd like to stick around in about 15 minutes, I will lead you in a chalice craft activity so that you can make a chalice for home. But right now, as we unmute everyone or you unmute yourselves, wish each other peace with the words, I hold you in my heart. I hold you, I hold you, you in, in my, my heart. heart.